25-pound weight division. Fighting out of the red corner tonight, he's wearing the black trunks and weighing in at 125 pounds. Representing Seatside more time with a one-up on the Pair of 125 pounders set to square off on Friday night fights. Brought to you by Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino. Both first timers here on Friday night fights. Daryl Superboy Ocott out of MK Muay Thai and Fitness in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Goes up against Matt Belilo from our very own Seton Gym in Astoria, Queens, New York. Aria Lagami with James Guccione for the first of a scheduled three between Superboy and Belilo. A nice head kick. There from Matt as he quickly counters the early, early onslaught from Okat. Yeah, Darrell came out strong, you know. He didn't waste any time. He jumped right on Matt. He's not giving him any second, you know. Okat wearing the all-white trunks. Belilo in the black with silver trim. Actually, you know, I was looking forward to this. I actually used to train Belilo, you know. I trained Matt at uh, Progressive Martial Arts before he was at Seton. You know, he made the change over to Seton, and uh, he's been... Uh, He's been looking good. He's been training hard. So, And, of course, James Guccione, you also have been known to grace the halls of Seton Gym. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, Aziz has been in my corner for many of my many of my best fights, you know. And the usual suspects behind Belilo tonight, Aziz Nabi and Joel Estevez. Good action here early between Okot and Belilo. Nice combination, nice combination from Okot. combination by Okot. And a, a body nice head kick. Movement. Body yeah. kick. And then, as you say, James avoids... The right hook. Okot's throwing everything behind those punches. He's not. He's not holding back at all. He's. He's. You know, he's not a slow starter here, and, and he's throwing big, big, heavy hands. Looping right hand got in there for Okot as well. Now but, Okot, he's okay. coming in hungry tonight, James. 0-4 record, so he's got something to prove as he dumps Belilo onto the canvas. And and with that 0-4 record, it really says nothing about the fighter he is because he's been taking nothing but hard fights, just like this fight. You know, it says a lot about the uh, the quality of fighters you're fighting. He comes from a good camp, and they don't steer away from a hard fight, you know? Augie Matias and Ray Maldonado training with Okot tonight, who suddenly is Big in a right fire, hand. fire fight now with Belilo. Big right hand, but Matt's keeping his composure. I'll tell you, Matt's keeping his composure. He's not letting it show. Even if it hurt him, he's not showing, and he's firing back strong with big, heavy left kicks. And a wow. strong flurry to end the first round. Great first round. For Matt Belilo. Looked like he was kind of on his heels for a moment and then out of nowhere just took control of those last 15 or so seconds. I'm glad I'm not a judge on that one because that, that, that round went back and forth. That was a, absolutely both fighters landing some really good shots in that opening two minutes. And this is our second fight of the night, James Guccione. Plenty of action still ahead on Friday night fights. The latest. Installment of the longest running Muay Thai series in North America. I like to see if uh, if Daryl's going to be able to keep that pace up, you know. But th with these little guys, you know, smaller weight classes, you really get the action, and th they're able to maintain that p pace sometimes for the whole fight. It really makes for an ex ex exciting bout. There's a 125 pound matchup. Both guys appear to be in tip top shape. You know, it's. So Okat came out on fire out of the blue corner. Belilo responded. Okat went back again in the final 10 or 15 seconds of round nice one. Touching gloves for the second round. I like to see that. Belilo was seemed to kind of regain the moment as round one came to a close. Let's see how things begin in round two. Again, Okat in the white trunks, Belilo in the black, and silver trip. Big left kicks out of Matt. He's utilizing his left leg really, really well against Darrell, you know? Especially the punches coming off of Darrell. He's, he's making him hesitate on throwing his right hand. He 
because he's throwing big overhand rights, but then that left kick is coming to the body, you know, and that's a, that's not a trade you want to you want to be in. And Belilo on the come here early in the second round. You can see Okada's tailed off just a little bit from that pace he set in the first round. As I say that, he unleashes a body combination and wraps up Belilo with the body lock. Hasn't been much clinching in this fight. You see, you know, it's. Uh, Matt's keeping a calm and cool pace, but but he's controlling the ring. He's you know he's got a, he's got Okada on the uh, on the, on the back on the defensive. He's thudding him backwards now. Thudding body kicks to the ribcage area of Daryl Okada, and also the right arm starting to show some damage as he's blocking some of Belilo's kicks. Yeah, these middle kicks from Belilo, even the ones that are landed on arm, those are not blocked. You know that's 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 landed on the arm and that's hurting. It's causing damage. Different story here in round number two. Yeah, I haven't seen Darrell throw that right hand in quite some time. That, that I think those left kicks are really adding up. Nice combo there from Okato. Short on the uppercut, but he got Belilo's attention. Oh, a stiff right hand. Backs up yeah, Belilo. Flash, flash knockdown, no knockdown, no eight count. That was a slip, he got right up. That's, you know, was Good. not a knockdown. Joel Becker didn't call it a knockdown, and I agree with that decision 100%. You know? Belilo taking exception, going up high with the right leg, and then a straight right, the cap off round two. It was a great round, you know, and he even every, every once in a while when you think Darrell was, was falling out, he comes back with something big, and he was right back in there. Excitement early on, early on in this edition of Friday Night Fights. That was a good round between two guys with not a ton of rounds in between them, but both guys came for a battle tonight. Get Ariel Agami ringside at the Broad Street Ballroom with James Guccione. He of the upper cut men, the best cut men in the business. James Guccione, a longtime participant here on Friday Night Fights, a fan favorite. Appreciate those we, words, Ariel. We're very happy to have those words. Absolutely happy to have hard. you along. I work a lot of cuts on this show and many others, and I, I appreciate those words dearly. Thank kept you. a lot of fights going, yeah. I might yeah, add, I, as I've well. Kept, I've kept some fights <laughs> going, yeah. Absolutely. We've yeah. seen some gushers that. Yep. You and your team have plugged up over the years, and we appreciate it. And the fighters do as well. Darrell Ocott and Matt Belilo. Great, getting ready for this third and final round. This has been a great fight so far. An exchange of respect before our final two minutes. Darrell Ocott looking for his first win. Belilo looking for his second. Ducked underneath the right kick. Whoa. Darrell throws a big. Looks like some capoeira head. mixed in from Darrell yeah. Ocott there. Spinning heel kick went just over the head of Matt Belilo. A little bit of everything so far in Belilo versus Okat. Both guys are loosening up here, you know. That big right overhand right hand, you know. That's and found a home for Darrell all night long. Backs it up with another, and Okat again as we go back and forth, James. Back in the driver's seat in the early going of round three. Absolutely, yeah. His right hand has found a home again. Telegraph that knee did Belilo when Okat able to move out of the way. Good body shot by Okat. Good body shot back by Belulo. Oh, tremendous slugfest breaking out here. Okat with the right hand again. That right hand's finding a home. Body kick by Belilo. Those have been the two signatures. Yeah, that's every time he gets hit with the right hand, he knows that he's got to he's got to work the left the left round kick to shut that arm down. Jumping knee for Belilo, and another one fires into the midsection of Okat. Both of these guys are still fired up in the third. There's no sign of fatigue on either one of them. Incredible, because both guys have really done a lot of work They're in working. there. working, yeah. There's been a lot of output in these rounds. Beautiful counter nice. by Okat. Corralled the left leg of Belilo and fired a low leg kick of his own. So Belilo right now looks like he's the one that needs a little bit of, jo of a jolt here down the stretch. Okat has been in command. Let's see if Belilo can pull a Sugar Ray Leonard here and steal the judge's eyes for the last few seconds of a round. That Look. right hand again over to Okat. You know, and there's your final round. bell. Tremendous fight between two guys who make their Friday night fights debuts this evening and great sportsmanship. Great sportsmanship. Darrell Okat and Matt Belilo embrace at center ring after really six outstanding minutes of action.
Yeah, that was, that was excellent. Excellent sportsmanship. Both guys are fired up and smiling. I love to see that. So Cott salutes the crowd. Looking to bring his first ever win back to MK Muay Thai and Fitness in Fairlawn, New Jersey. He's a native of Saddlebrook. Okat came in at 0-4, but like James Guccione said, not indicative of his skill level, rather wow. an example of how tough his fights usually are. And tonight, we saw more of the same. Yeah, I mean, 0-4 uh, fighter, but he came out here against Belillo from Seton Gym. You know, and they know this guy's gonna be coming from a solid camp, you know, solid Muay Thai, and, and, and he's been training a long time. So we go to the judges scorecards. Let's go to Connor Hall. Twenty-nine, twenty-eight. Judge B sees this 30-27. Judge C sees this 29-28. Unanimously in favor of Matt Balillo. <laughs> Well, James Guccione, that you said in the very first round that you would not want to be a judge for this fight. And I think this fight could have easily been scored the exact opposite way and still been fair. Yeah, it was it was it was an excellent fight, but I I, I do believe the judges got it right, you know, but uh there was a lot going on. I think M Matt showed more tools, more, you know what I mean? Daryl Daryl uh Daryl scored a lot with the right hand, but overall the use of the tools, you know, and Muay Thai that score is heavy. The, the use of your weapons, the more weapons you're using, the higher you're gonna score. There was kicks coming out of him, punches, body shots. He threw knees in the third round, which we thought he was losing, but he was throwing knees. So I think I think they had it right to, to, score, to score Muay Thai properly here. Well, Darryl Okot takes another tough luck loss. Matt Belilo improves to two and one. This is Friday Night Fights. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for three more rounds of action, this time out of the 132-pound weight division, Glory Rules Muay Thai. Fighting out of the red corner, she's wearing the pink trunks and weighing in at 131 pounds. Representing Square Unity MMA with a one-in-one -one record. From Bronx, New York, Erica Hirano. And fighting out of the blue corner, she's wearing the black trunks with the white and green trim and weighing in at 130 pounds. Representing Animals MMA with an 0-1 record, from Larchmont, New York, Caroline Scarpa. turn our attention to the ladies on Friday Night Fights. 132 pound battle between Erica Hirano in the red gear and pink trunks going up against Caroline Scarpa in the all black with the blue shin pads. Caroline didn't waste any time. She came right out. She didn't want to touch gloves right off the bat. She wanted to just get right to business. First time we've seen these two ladies on Friday Night Fights. 
Scheduled for three rounds here, as you can see, full gear in use. Scarpa coming forward for the first 30 seconds of this fight. Hasn't stopped throwing punches and kicks. From the southpaw position, we got a southpaw. She's pushing right forward. Lower leg kick from a Scarpa. Of, a lot of strikes, a lot of output coming out of coming out of Caroline. And we'll see if this ends up causing a problem for either of these women later on in the bout. Yeah, I feel like at some point in this bout, exhaustion has become a factor. Scarpa walked into a right hand from Hirano. Hirano's utilizing the leg kicks good. She's, you know, every once in a while she's tapping her in the leg, and you know, you see a little redness adding up. You know, it's starting to, it's starting to add up. Straight right hand gets in there for Hirano. Comes in with a record of two and one. Scarpa at zero oh and one. Caroline's out at Animals MMA in uh, Yonkers, New York, my hometown. Sam Margie, owner of that gym, great guy. He does great things for the neighborhood and uh, runs the the neighborhood wrestling program for the schools. Is actually out of his gym. He's he's done unbelievable things for uh, for the neighborhood and, and his community. And uh, you know I'm happy to have them on the show. We'll see one of Caroline's teammates a little bit later on in the evening. As Scarpa and Hirano come down the stretch in this first round. And there is the bell. A lot of action from these two action, women here. A lot of action. Nothing too significant, but there's been a lot of action, you know. Once again, uh, I, wouldn't know how to, I wouldn't know how to judge that one. So again, Hirano coming in with a record of 2-1. and one. She's 38 years of age, originally from Yokohama, Japan, now calls New York City home. On the other side, Carolyn Scarpa from Larchmont, New York, and Westchester. Yeah, she trains out of Animals MMA in Yonkers. She's actually the manager of a UFC gym in Mamaroneck. She actually runs that gym. Oh, Multi-talented are our fighters and broadcasters, I might add, here on Friday Night Fights. And we welcome both Carolyn and Erica to the show. Carolyn, she said that her her nickname is Infinite. She likes to go by the name Infinite because she's a math nerd and she's always been fascinated with the concept of infinity and pushing yourself beyond the limits that you know of that you can go. So she mentioned that to me as well, inspired by math. She that's pretty me. cool. Inspired by math. That's pretty cool. Underway in round number two. Caroline Scarpa and Erica Hirano. Hirano in the pink trunks with red gear. Scarpa in the black trunks with white trim and the blue shin pads. Both of these ladies is landing a lot of, a lot of punches. You know, there's, you know, might, uh, might come down to who's, who starts to cover up and block some of these punches because the output has been, uh, been at a very high level. And when you have somewhat even outputs, it may come down to who's looks like she's coming forward. And right now it's been Scarpa for much yes, of this fight. Absolutely, you're right about that. She's had the ring control. Eric has been on the, on the defensive and moving backwards the whole time. Scarpa. These women cannot exchange, it cannot wait to exchange these lower leg kicks. Center of the ring, Hirano and Scarpa. Again, it's Caroline moving forward. Keeps nice on punches. coming. There, there's some straight punches out of Caroline. Maybe starting to take a little bit of a toll on Hirano. Yeah, she's backing up a little more, and, and I see her, her guard isn't up as, as uh, strong as it should be. She's starting to show a little sign of fatigue. Hirano comes from a program that's a little bit unorthodox in the martial arts world. James, she fights at a square unity MMA in the Bronx, trains with Mark Hanna, but there's no official head trainer at Square Unity. It's almost like a fighting co-op. Yeah, and, and, and there are, uh, I gotta say, nothing but good things about them, though. I mean, Mark has uh, shown up and fought here many times. He's taken a short notice fight against a very tough fighter, and uh, he goes the distance, he shows up to fight, he's always got a smile on his face. Uh, you know, you like to see that, you know? Absolutely. Final seconds of round number two, tick away. Arano and Scarpa through two of a schedule three. You can see Scarpa on the right side here screen. And Erica, yeah. <laughs> and bo both of yeah, these women. Yeah, they both look exactly the same both, heading back into the both corner. Both are a little bit depleted, yeah. but Scarpa really kind of 
turned up the Jets a little bit that last 60 seconds or so. She did, she did. I, I think and it's gonna come down to this corner work and really catching your breath. And how about Hirano not even taking a seat in between rounds here? There's no stool no in her stool. corner at all. That's a, that's a Seton Jim thing. I mean, you know, anytime you see the Seton Jim, you see no stool. So maybe she's been watching uh, Aziz and the, and the gang in the corner because we never get the stool. As you can see. <laughs> I know the only time As I ever got the stool. I know the only time I ever got the stool. I was in serious trouble. <laughs> James, James Guccion longingly wishing he had a stool for some of his battles yeah. that he had here on Friday Night yeah. Fights. Anytime I knew I was sitting in a stool, I knew that the last round must have been really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen James do some tremendous work in the ring, and now he's doing tremendous work on the microphone with us here on Friday Night Fights. And of course, his continued success as one of the best cut men in all the land. Yeah, sitting in the seat, you know, if somebody starts bleeding, it's gonna it's gonna get me antsy. I and just, you're uh, well dressed, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Guccione, so we don't want to see that nice jacket get any blood on it. Wouldn't be the first time. I I fought and uh, two fights later the main event was bleeding and I was uh, dressed up and I jumped in a corner. <laughs> when there's a cut to be handled, James Guccione ignores the wardrobe. Business to tend to. Scarpa and Hirano continue to exchange here. See Scarpa maybe a little bit less English on those shots from before. As I say that, she comes down with a left hand. Uh, they didn't call that an eight count. I don't know, that one, uh, I could have seen an eight count on that one. As Hirano gets up, she's met with some more leather from Scarpa. And Scarpa almost bracing for a low leg kick. She's looking for a shot yeah, down Scarpa's Broadway really here. really coming strong, and Erica's fading. I, uh, I feel like, you know, uh, she almost should have got an eight count in that in that position. But we'll see. You know, let's see if let's see if she uh, she takes that and does something back. Hirano. Almost looked like she was about to put Scarpa in a side headlock and start pounding away. Teep there by Erica. Right hand by Erica. But Scarpa undeterred. Pushing forward, pushing yes. forward. Scarpa, she's coming straight forward, seen, straight punches. We've seen Infinite do this for the entire fight. Even exchanges, but marked by Scarpa moving forward. And that is the end of round three as Hirano and Scarpa embrace in the center of the ring. Good fight from both of these ladies. It goes to the judges now. Excellent. Uh, nice, nice evenly matched fight, if I don't say so myself. I matched it, so I like to say that. <laughs> James Guccione does it all. Some of the action here from round number three. See, Hirano actually got cut off a couple of good straight shots there. She and that's did. one of the risks for Scarpa, just basically plowing down the middle. Straight, you're going to run into yeah, some leather. She, she came straight the whole time. There was no angles, and she would just, she pushed straight forward. And there was the shot. So that was a, that was a tough call there, James, with a no knockdown. Kevin yeah, Molala, our referee, electing not was, to give it to him. And you know, I, I think, you know, we learned, actually, we just took the uh, USMF course, because we're on board with USMF yesterday, and uh, we had the course. And throughout the course, you know, a lot of their body language plays a huge toll in Muay Thai. And, uh, and she sat down. She didn't jump right back up like Belillo. And, you know, she didn't jump right back up. She she sat there for a minute, and she made a face. I feel like that's, that, that's going to get you an eight count. So we go to the judges' scorecards, and Connor Hall has the official particulars. Okay. After three rounds of action, we do, well, we're going to go to the judges' scorecards. Judge A sees this 27-30 in favor of the blue corner. Judge B sees this 29-28 in favor of the red corner. Judge C sees this 27-30 in favor of our winner by split decision, Caroline Scarpa. So the woman who goes by the nickname Infinite has win number one, Caroline Scarpa from Animals MMA in Yonkers, New York. Brings back a win for the team of Samir Margie. Great, 
great fight out of both of them. Erica fought a, fought a great fight, you know. She she stayed busy even even throughout the end. She showed a couple signs of being tired, and then, you know, you really saw her fight through that and come back and give it her all. Mar Samir Margie and Erica Zeta cornering for Caroline there. Scarpa picks up a victory in her Friday Night Fights debut. Erica Hirano falls to 2-2 two and two in her career. You are watching Friday Night Fights.